Look who's joining in. So here's the last video in the how to make a video game series. Today we're going to be finishing our game by creating a credit screen, a welcome menu, and making everything ready for the export phase. Let's get started. So the first thing I want to do is delete our level 2 that we created in a previous video. And the reason for this is that we need to optimize the way that we create levels. I see a lot of beginners simply duplicating their first level, making a few changes, and then repeating that process until they have enough levels. And that of course makes sense and it's also what we're going to be doing, but unless you think a bit about optimizing the process, it makes it very difficult to go back and change settings. Say if we wanted to change some settings on the player, we would have to do that on all the levels. That is one of the reasons why we use prefabs. So we can just take our player along with our game manager, drag it down here, our main camera, our endpoint, and our canvas, and turn all of that into a prefab. And I think these are all of the objects that we are realistically going to be changing, but you could go nuts and change all of the objects to prefabs. This way we can easily update something and it will change on all of the levels. Now this is a bit of a hacky approach. It's going to work fine for beginner games and that's also why we're going to be doing it here. If you're creating a larger game you would either a make some kind of editor tool that makes it easier for you to create levels or b have all of your level data in a separate scene that you then load on top of your main scene. If you want to learn more about that stuff I'll have some links in the description. For now we can just go ahead and create a folder for all of our prefabs here. Let's select the canvas and game manager, main camera, obstacle and player and drag those in there. And now we can save the scene and duplicate it as many times as we want. I'm just going to duplicate it a few times here. And you should of course go nuts now and create a bunch of interesting levels. I'm just going to take the first one here and I'm going to remove some of the obstacles. Actually, I'm going to remove all of these. I'm going to take these two and move them forward a bit and space them out. So this is going to be a really easy start level. Let's save that, go into the second one. And here I'm just going to remove about every second obstacle. Just to also make this a lot easier. Let's save that. And then level 3 is going to be our full level. Now these are all really short, but they're just for test purposes. Now we can go ahead and create a separate scene that is going to act as our end screen. This scene will be loaded when we complete the last level, in our case level 3. So let's go file, new scene, or press ctrl n. Let's create some UI. So let's go and right click, go UI, and let's select panel. Again, the panel is just an image that fills our entire screen. Let's switch to 2D mode and hit F to focus on it. Let's remove the source image. So we just get a blank color and let's make this non-transparent. Let's also make it a bit gray. We're going to call this panel credits and on top we'll create a UI element text. Again, let's hit F to focus on it and let's make some more room for this one. I'm holding down Alt to scale from the center. Let's also center it on the X and Y. Let's change the text to something like thanks for playing and let's make the font size something around 50. I'm going to widen it a bit. Let's also go into the font and change it to Roboto Thin. You can see now that if we maximize our game by hitting shift space, our text stays the same size. To change this, we go to the canvas and change the UI scale mode to scale with screen size and drag it all the way to fit the height. So now it scales up. We can then take our text object and move it up. Let's rename it to something like Thanks. We can then duplicate it by hitting Ctrl D, shift drag it down towards the center, and let's change the text to made by. Let's change the font size to something like 20 and change the font to Roboto Medium. Again, we can duplicate this, move it down, and here you can just write your name. I'm just gonna write Brackies. Change the font size to 50 again and the font back to Roboto Thin. I think that looks pretty good. Let's also take these two text elements and move them up a bit. And let's rename the first one to made by and the second one to brackies. Finally, we can create a button that will allow us to exit the game. So I'm going to right click on the credits, go UI and then button. Let's move this down along the center. Let's scale it up. I don't want it to be too big. And then I'm going to show you some pretty cool button styling that I like to do. I like to take the source image and select none again. So we get a flat color. I like to leave this at completely white. Then I'm going to add a new component and the component we want to add is shadow. Now this allows us to cast a hard shadow onto the background. I'm going to select zero on the X and next negative two on the Y. And I'm then going to decrease the opacity. This gives it kind of a cold, simplistic, modern look. I'm also going to make the button even smaller. Then we can change the text of the button. Let's change the text to quit, the font to Roboto regular and the font size to something around 20. We can maybe also make the color a bit lighter. I think that's better. So when you're satisfied with this, all we need to do is hook up the button to some kind of script. Let's go to our credits and add one. We can just go ahead and call it credits and let's open it up in Visual Studio. 
Now, whenever we want to trigger some code using a button, we need to make sure that the function we create is marked as public. Normally, when we make a function, we just write void, then the name of the function. In our case, this would be something like quit and then some curly brackets. But you can see that if we save this and go back into Unity and then go and select our button, we add an on click event. This means that whenever our button is clicked, it's going to notify what every object we put in here. And we're going to put the credits object because that's where our script is sitting. And as the function we want to call, we're going to go under credit and in here you can see that there's no quit method. So instead we go into Visual Studio and we mark it as public. Now when we save, we should see that when we try and search for a function, it appears. So let's select that. And now every time we click this button, this quit button, everything inside of these two curly brackets will happen. And we only want something very simple. We want to quit the application. So we go application.quit. And we're not going to be able to see this happening because Unity won't actually quit the game when it's inside of Unity. Only when you export it will it actually close down the window. So we'll just throw a debug.log statement as well. Let's say something like quit. Now if we play the game, hover over and click our button, you can see that the message quit appears in the console. And it will do this every time we click that button. Of course, when we export the game, we'll only be able to click it once. Awesome. Now if you want, you can really easily take this scene and make it into a menu. To do that, we save it. And this one is going to be called credits. We then duplicate the credits scene. And let's rename this to something like menu or welcome screen. Let's double click that. And nothing changes, but we are now indeed viewing the menu scene. We can then change around some of these settings. Up here, we can say welcome to, and then remove brackets here and change the made by to some name for the game. It's really popular to use some kind of twist on the void cube. Cubetastic. Oh, that's cube. I'm just going to go with cube thon. Yeah, it's marathon and cube combined. It's not good, but it's the best I've got right now. Let's bump up the font size and maybe also change the color to kind of a red just to keep things interesting. Let's drag down the welcome to a little bit. Let's drag up the button and we want to change some names here. So credits will be renamed to welcome. Thanks will be renamed to welcome to made by will be renamed to cube thon and the text of our button will be changed to start. Let's take all of these objects and move them down a little bit. Let's also go to a welcome object before it was called credits and remove the credit script. Let's instead add another script called menu. And in here, of course, we just want to create a single function that will start the game. So let's open it, clean up, and let's create again a public void and we can't call it start because that's a function already created by Unity. So let's call it start game. Then we want to load the next scene. So we'll be using Unity engine dot scene management like we've done before. And we want to write scene manager dot load scene. And the scene we want to load is the next scene. So we want to get the current scene by going scene manager dot get active scene, then dot build index and then plus one. If you're confused about what this does, check out the last video. Let's save this, go into Unity. Now let's select our button. You can see that the on click event is currently missing an object. So let's drag in the welcome object. Let's go into function and select menu, start game. Now the last thing we need to do in order to string all this together is go to file, build settings and add all of our scenes into the build. So let's start by adding the menu and we want this to be on top because we want this to be the first scene that we see. We then load level one, level two, then level three, and finally the credits. I'm also just going to take the two scripts here and drag them under the scripts folder. And that should actually be it. Our game should be fully playable with a menu screen, credits and several levels. And if we're able to run this now, we're actually ready for the export phase. So let's hit play. It's going to say, welcome to Cubethon. Let's select start to start the game. You can see I'm in here on the first level that is really easy. It's going to say level complete. Go to the next level that is just a tiny bit harder. Again, level complete, and here comes the third level. And of course, you can make these levels as challenging as you want. And finally, because we completed all the levels, it's going to say thanks for playing and some credits. And then we have the button quit here. When we click that, it's going to say quit. And if this was an actual application, it would close down. So that's pretty much it for this video and this series. You made it all the way through. Congratulations on that. And congratulations on making your first step as a game developer. I decided to keep this video series pretty short so that most people would be able to complete it. But I definitely want to make more beginner friendly videos. The new videos will just be on standalone subjects. I'm going to begin by making a video on exporting your game to different platforms. And we're going to use this as an example project. So definitely subscribe and stay tuned for more. So without further ado, thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video. Thanks to all the awesome Patreon supporters who donated in March. And a special thanks to Derek Heemskirk, Faisal Marify, James Kellhoun and Jason Tito. If you want to support the channel and become a patron yourself, you can do so at patreon.com slash Thanks a lot guys.